It began as a rumor among pilots, a test flight no one was supposed to know about. Somewhere over the Baltic Sea, radar screens started flickering, a formation of aircraft moved across the sky, their electronic signatures vanishing, reappearing, and then vanishing again. But this wasn't an American stealth fighter showing off, it was Sweden's Gripen E, doing something the F-35 was never designed to handle. Electronic warfare, the invisible battlefield, and on that day, the world's most expensive fighter met its biggest weakness, a smarter opponent. For years, the F-35 has been sold as the ultimate weapon of modern air combat. Stealthy, lethal, and built on technology no one else could match. The US called it the cornerstone of Allied air power. But the truth is, the F-35 wasn't built for every fight. It was built for dominance, not disruption. And that's where Sweden saw its opening. Because while others focused on radar evading shapes and trillion dollar programs, Sweden quietly built a fighter to hunt in the chaos, a jet that doesn't need stealth to survive. A jet that can turn the enemy's technology against them. A jet that thrives in the one place the F-35 fears most, a sky filled with electronic noise. That jet was the Gripen E. The story starts with a problem no one likes to talk about. Modern air combat isn't just about who can see first, it's about who can still fight when everything goes dark, when GPS is jammed, when radars are blinded, when data links collapse. That's the nightmare scenario the F-35 was never meant to face. A battlefield where stealth doesn't matter because sensors are scrambled and communications are dead. But for Sweden, that chaos is home turf. The Swedish Air Force has always trained under the assumption that, in a real war, its bases would be bombed, its systems jammed, and its pilots left to fight alone. So they designed a fighter that could do exactly that. Operate independently, adapt instantly, and strike without support. That philosophy became the heart of the Gripen E. When the Gripen E entered its testing phase, the world expected just another budget fighter. Critics laughed, they said it couldn't compete with stealth, they said it was too small, too cheap, too limited. But then came the first demonstrations. Sweden invited NATO observers to watch. They expected to see a capable but modest European jet. What they saw instead was a masterclass in electronic warfare. The jet could change frequencies faster than enemy radars could lock on, it could mimic other aircraft signatures, and when needed it could vanish, not through stealth coding, but through pure electronic brilliance. Observers said the simulation ended with opposing pilots completely disoriented, targets they thought they were tracking turned out to be decoys. Their missiles? Fired at ghosts. Now, let's address the obvious question. Could the Gripen E actually outfight an F-35? That depends on the battlefield. In a clean, perfectly coordinated mission with full US support? Probably not. The F-35's stealth and sensors are unmatched when everything works. But, you know, war rarely works. And in a real fight, with jamming, deception, and contested airspace, the Gripen's adaptability becomes its biggest weapon. It's kinda like comparing a luxury car to a rally car. One is built for smooth highways, the other is built for survival when the road disappears. Even within NATO, that realization is spreading. Pilots from Canada, Finland and the Czech Republic who've flown the Gripen describe it as a pilot's jet. Intuitive, responsive, and surprisingly lethal. They talk about its electronic systems with respect, the kind that makes you rethink what modern air power really means. One officer even joked, if the F-35 is the star quarterback, the Gripen is the player who rewrites the playbook mid-game. And that's exactly what Sweden wanted. While everyone else chased stealth, Sweden mastered the art of confusion. Instead of hiding from the enemy, the Gripen deceives him. Instead of relying on perfect networks, it builds its own. Instead of draining budgets, it multiplies fleets. That's not just smart engineering, that's survival strategy. And, here's the irony. The same nations that dismissed the Gripen a decade ago are now, well, studying its design philosophy. The US Air Force's next-generation concepts now emphasize open architecture and electronic adaptability, ideas Sweden, honestly, perfected years earlier. Even the Pentagon's analysts have quietly admitted it. Future wars won't be won by stealth alone. 
they'll be won by who can adapt fastest when the systems fail. And that's exactly what the Gripen E was built for. Today, while the F-35 continues to dominate headlines, the Gripen E dominates attention in a different way. It's the jet everyone underestimated, and now, everyone's watching. Because in a world obsessed with visibility, the Gripen thrives in the unseen, where information collapses, where networks die, where pilots must rely not on sensors, but on strategy. That's where Sweden's fighter becomes something else entirely. Not a stealth jet, but a thinking jet. So when people say Sweden's Gripen just did what the F-35 was never designed to handle, they're not exaggerating. It faced the one environment America's trillion-dollar fighter dreads and turned it into its playground. It jammed, deceived, and outmaneuvered in ways the world's superpowers didn't expect. It proved that air dominance doesn't come from being invisible, but from being unpredictable. While others spent billions chasing silence, Sweden learned to speak the language of chaos, fluently, and that's why, in the age of electronic warfare, the Grapen E may not just survive the future, it may define it. Because in a sky full of machines built to hide, it's the one jet built to fight back. Sweden didn't build the biggest fighter, they built the smartest.